Duckies, Andy Livy here, and this is a super special video about the one and only Exceldro. So I want to kind of cover what he's actually done for streamers and all the content creators this year by his different plugins. He's created nine plugins that are all completely different and have completely changed the way that I stream and my setup, even just when it comes to recording videos as well. So we're going to go through all of the plugins that he's released in the year 2021, okay? So hopefully you probably don't know about all of these, but I'll leave links to individual videos and the links to the plugins down below as well, all right? Put your rag over the stone, let's go. So the first plugin that Exceldro released in 2021 was the Gradient Source plugin. What a way to start the year. This is the 1st of January that this was released. And it basically, typical to your color source, this will allow you to actually make a gradient instead of just using a blank color. Which, in my opinion, I don't know how it's not a part of OBS already, but obviously with this plugin, it's made possible. You can obviously see the video. I'm going to leave all the links down in the description if you want to see how it fully works. But this is a brief look. We can jump into sources, we can add a gradient source just here, we call it gradient source, and straight away you can see we can change the size of it, we can do the rotation of where it is, and recently he's just updated the ability to add even more steps in there as well. So we can add central colours and uh, as many as we want as you can see. So I change all these colours to, to whatever I want and we can have multiple steps to make beautiful looking backgrounds. Uh, change the midpoint of each one of these as well. So we can create some really cool advanced overlays. And it is as simple as that to use. Changing the midpoint, you can even change the opacity as well. So if you want certain things to be semi-transparent, you can totally do that as well. Such a simple plugin, and I genuinely don't know what I'd do without it. So the next plugin I want to show is Transition Table. Exceldra released this one day after, just one day, January the 2nd. And you guys might actually remember an old plugin that we used to use called Transition Override Matrix. Um, and basically this was a really good way of setting different transitions for different scenes. But as OBS and the technology has gone on, we've started making more and more scenes and it became a little bit difficult to, to navigate between. So this is where Transition Table comes in and makes it a lot easier to manage. So inside of OBS, all we have to do is go up to Tools and you would see Transition Table, use that, and you'll have your collection of scenes and your different transitions just here, which you can actually filter between and everything like that. So I'm going to create a transition from my Just Chatting scene. So I'm going to type in just chatting, select that, and I want to go to the monitor scene. So anytime that I go from just chatting to monitor, I want it to do a cut. So I'm going to press set and press close. And then now when I go to the monitor scene, it will cut. Whereas my normal transition is move. So if I go back, you'll see it moves. When I go to monitor, it cuts. When I go from monitor to just chatting, it moves. So that is a really easy way of doing it. A lot of other features in there, making it a bit easier for you to manage and maintain your different scene transitions. Carrying on his work in January, this is January the 19th, and this is Audio Monitor. For me, this got rid of uh, voice meter. I don't use anything. All my audio now is managed inside of OBS, which is just insane. So this plugin has received a ton of updates since I originally did a video about it. Basically, any of your audio sources down here that you've got in your mixer, we can actually set up an individual monitor for it. So if I go to filters on one of these, add an audio filter, so I go down and press the plus sign, audio monitor, we can choose what output we want that, so it can be completely different output to what is your normal monitor inside of OBS. We can change the, the, the volume independently, so we can have a different volume compared to the stream as well. Uh, also offset it with delay, everything like that, which is insane. Press close, and one extra beautiful feature about this was we can have a custom dock just for audio monitoring as well. So we're gonna have two different mixes, one for our volume and one for the streams volume just there as well. Tons of other little features inside of that as well. Uh, if you guys haven't used it before, I would recommend giving it a go. It just makes managing your, uh, your streams and your audio so much easier. 
So after absolutely annihilating the year already in January, it took a couple of months off. Obviously still put out updates, but we next got downstream Kia on April the 11th. This is such a good plugin. It is great for adding lower thirds in or different elements that you will always want to have on screen because it will last through transitions. It'll also just always be on top and it won't be in your source list, which is crazy. It's just like having a scene on top of whatever scene is active right now. And it actually made us do different cool effects. So if I turn my downstream key on now, you'll see it's added this little effect up here. We added a blur behind it using DSK Blur, which I've got videos on as well. Just search for it, you'll find it super easy. And this source is not in this list, look. This source is not in this list at all. It is on its own kind of scene at the top of all of this. So if I transition between another scene and back, it's always on top, even through the transition, which is great if you want to always have something on screen. You can create multiple different ones of these and change between them as well, and also set transitions between them as well, which is insane. So you show and hide transitions, completely up to you, so customizable, and it just makes all your scenes look a lot cleaner. Next up, I could not do anything without this plugin. All the things that I create in stream up and all the stuff that I make for my stream and test out, uh, I couldn't do it without this plugin. It's the most handy plugin. If you're not using it, get it installed right now. This is Source Copy. Again, bringing it to us early in the year, April 17th. This does what it says on the tin. It copies all your sources. I've got a great video going into how everything works with it as well. And it is so cool. So we just go up to tools and we go down to source copy and it brings up this side panel. Even if you've got a ton of different scenes, these are all my scenes just here. We can load scenes in, we can paste them. So if we've only just copied the, the JSON file, we can actually paste it directly in without having to load anything else. We can go to a certain scene, say my just chatting scene, we can see the sources that are here. We can save that scene. We can copy that scene. We can load a source into here, paste a source, load a filter, paste a filter, and have access to save and copy filters and also all the sources individually as well, which is absolutely insane. It will save you so much time when you're wanting to copy something to a different scene collection or even just exporting your uh, a specific scene for somebody else to use. I'm looking at you guys doing stuff on Fiverr. All right, get it installed. Next up is the Source Record plugin. I absolutely love this one for when I'm filming things for uh, social media or anything like that that requires me to have a clean output of a specific source. Basically what this means is inside of OBS when you start recording and you're recording anything that's on the screen, you could record it separately as well. So if I wanted to record, say, the camera on its own, I can go to filters on the camera, I can add a filter, add the Source Record filter, just there, add it to there, and we can output this, choose a name for it, choose how I want to record it, whether or not it's when I start streaming or when I start recording in general. We can add a replay buffer to it. There's a lot of different tinkering with uh, settings here that you can do just like you would do inside of OBS to get the right recording path. I have known people have issues with it, so your mileage may vary but Excel Dry will obviously keeps everything updated. So make sure you do feedback any sort of issues that you have with it. But if you're wanting to create great social media content and maybe just want gaming clips, this is a great way to do that. So here's another great tool that I probably couldn't work without. It just makes managing different uh, windows and everything like that a lot easier. So this is source dock. Basically any source or scene you can dock into its own window. So you've always got access to see it, uh, manipulate it as well. So many settings have been constantly added to this plugin. So as a brief example, once it's installed, we go up to tools, go down to source dock, and it'll bring up a little window like this. A great feature that was just added is when you can use these little uh, boxes at the bottom to create full docked windows like this. So if you want your chat nice and big, you can do that. That's a nice little feature that was added. So I'm gonna go in here and add my display just here. And I'm just gonna call this display in settings and then I press add. And you'll be able to see, I've got now this extra dock that's popped up that always has this preview on it. I can access the properties of it, depending on what sort of source it is. If it's a text source, you can edit the text. I can access the filters menu as well. 
and I can also change the scene. So you could see it as like the ultimate studio mode plugin, which is amazing. So if I bring up a text source, for instance, so I'll add a new text source and I'll call it the text GDI and press OK. So now if I search in here for text GDI, add that in there, I'll just type in text here. I can add all these and remove whichever settings that I want on there as well. But I'm just going to press add and then we can press close. And now I've got my text source inside of here and I can type into it anytime that I need at all. So I could have this docked inside of OBS at the side here if I wanted to. And anytime I want to edit this text source, I can just keep adding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever I want, which is absolutely insane. And the penultimate plugin we're going to look at is Scene Notes Doc, which I think is a super handy plugin, especially if you're creating a show and you've got show notes and things like that. Once installed, all we need to do is right click and we can see there's a Scene Notes Doc just there. And basically, this is all your scenes notes. So I'm just going to put this docket to the side like so. So I'll call it, I'll type in Scene 1. So you could have your script there or something like that. And as we change scene, Watch it, it's going to change completely there. So now we, we can have scene two. If we wanted to, I'm just using this as an example. Go back to scene one, you can see it there. Scene two completely changes. And we can write as much as we want in there. You can even do typefacing, add a list if you want to, uh, indent them and um, uh, decrease the indent. Also change all the font, the text color and the background color as well. So that is really good if you want to even make notes of if something's not working in OBS that you notice whilst you're live. You don't need to open all these different applications. You can just have it right here in OBS. So easy to access. And last, but by no means least, this should be in everybody's OBS. This automatically backs up all of your scenes. This is the Scene Collection Manager. What a way to end the year, Exodro. This one is awesome. So this plugin basically in OBS creates another tool that we can use and this is scene collection manager and it'll show us all our different scene collections just here and all the different backups it does it automatically you can back up anytime you like you can switch your scene collections and switch to different backups on the fly by just selecting a backup you want to go to and press the play sign you can create manual backups it's just your all in one looking after your obs so you don't lose anything automated backups every time that you change scene collection it is absolutely wonderful so get that installed right now the yeah uh, that's pretty much everything exceldro did in 2021 that absolutely hit it out of the park so many plugins i use them all uh, there's not even a plugin that i don't use from exceldro just because he wouldn't make it if it wasn't useful so give them a little try test them out let me know what your favorite plugin by Exceldro is in the links below, uh, in the links, in the comments below. And even if you can think of something that you'd want Exceldro to make in 2022, put that down there because I can assure you he will definitely read it. So leave down there exactly what you want to see from Exceldro in 2022. And please consider going to support him as well on PayPal or even GitHub. All his links are down below as well, all right? I will see you in the next video. Happy New Year. Put your rock with us. Um. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.